Chelsea are the latest bystanders who've been caught in the crossfire between Russia and Ukraine. Of course, you know that the London club is owned by a Russian billionaire, Roman Abramovich, whom the UK government has identified as a pro-Kremlin oligarch. He and the president of Russia, Vladimir Putin, apparently have a close relationship which goes way back. It is rumored that he attended Putin's birthday party back in the 90s before he became president. And reports say that he was a key figure in the handing over of power from the Yeltsin family to Putin in 2000. If you don't believe the rumors and reports, perhaps you'll believe the High Court judge who, in 2012, said that Abramovich indeed had privileged access to and very good relations with the Russian president. So yes, Abramovich indeed has a close relationship with Vladimir Putin, and basically it is that close relationship that has landed Chelsea in this mess they are currently in. What mess, you ask? Well, the UK government just imposed sanctions on Abramovich, and of course, that affects the London Football Club, which is the Russians' biggest asset in the country. And you could tell that the Chelsea owner sensed all this coming when he announced some days back that he would be selling the club. But this current sanction means that even that sale will have to be put on hold, or at least closely monitored. The club can actually still be sold, but it will now be on much stricter terms, and Abramovich will not be receiving proceeds from the sale if it does happen. For a sale to even happen in the first place, the Russian will have to now get approval from the UK government first. But that is just one of the many ways in which that sanction affects Chelsea as a football club. The basic footballing activities will still go on of course, matches will be played, the stadium facilities will still be open for us, but there will be huge restrictions. First of all, tickets to Chelsea games can no longer be sold, so only people who have previously purchased tickets or season ticket holders will be let into the stadium to watch the games. And if you think that is bad, listen to this. The club will also not be able to do any business whatsoever as long as the sanction is still on. That is, they will not be able to buy players, they will not be able to sell or loan players, and perhaps the worst of all for them, they will not even be able to renew contracts of current players. Also, the license only allows reasonable travel cost with a cap of £20,000 being put. For games within England, that may not be too much of a concern, but the cap already raises big questions about how the team will travel to France for the second leg of their Champions League knockout game against Lille next week. However, the club will still be able to receive money from broadcasting rights and prizes if and when they win trophies, but the spending of those monies will be restricted to football-related activities alone. They will also still be able to pay the staff of the club and will be able to spend on reasonable costs, which is stuff like catering, security, stewarding during games. But the maximum they can spend on reasonable costs is £500,000 per game. Now, there are already rumours of some Chelsea staff being laid off as the club anticipates perilous financial times in the near future. And like all that isn't enough, Chelsea's sponsors three have suspended their relationship with the club and asked that their logo be taken off the club's shirt only hours before kickoff yesterday. The telecoms company felt that, in the light of the sanction on the club, suspending the deal worth £40 million was the right thing to do. And that means that yesterday against Norwich City might be the last time we see the European champions with the now famous three logo on their shirts this season. But it's not all bad for Chelsea. Amidst all the talks and speculations about how the sanction might affect the club, the men's first team head coach Thomas Tuchel has assured the club and the fans that he will not be quitting in spite of the current difficulties. Before the game against Norwich, he said, I am still happy to be here and to be the manager of a strong football team. I feel privileged. Anyway, we will continue to closely monitor the situation and see how things unfold in the coming days. But as of now, Chelsea have said that they intend to engage the UK government concerning the issue. They hope to seek permission for an amendment of the license so that operations of the club can continue to go as normal as possible. But the truth is that even if you hate Chelsea Football Club, you have to admit that it feels like they're suffering for something they have no control over. Anyway, how do you predict things will unfold in the next couple of days? What do you think will happen? Will the club be sold? Will the sanctions continue? Will things manage to worsen for the Stamford Bridge Club? Let us know what you think in the comments. If you want to see more content like this, give this video a thumbs up 
and subscribe to the channel. Also, turn on the bell notification so you don't miss out when new content drops. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.